As you know, white nationalists held a rally this weekend in Charlottesville, Virginia, where city officials are planning to remove a statue of Robert E. Lee. At least 33 people were injured in the violence that followed, and one woman was killed when a white supremacist drove his car into a crowd of counter-protesters. Why do racist mobs always carry torches? You claim to be the master race, and you're still using fire to illuminate things. <laughs> Use a flashlight. You can hold it up to your chin like this and look really spooky. Like, isn't that what you're going for? And another thing about torches, when you use them, it makes it really easy for us to see your faces. So don't complain when we comment on it. Like this fucking guy. <laughs> Peter Javenovic or whatever, a name so American I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> he seems to think that we have the wrong impression of him. A 20-year-old University of Nevada Reno student seen here was at that protest. His photo has been circulating online. He says he's not an angry racist, but calls himself a white nationalist who cares for all people and wants to, quote, preserve what we have. You know what I think, Peter? I don't think you care about a statue of Robert E. Lee. You're not fighting to honour your white European roots. I think you're a pathetic, scared little asshole who got online and found a community of pathetic, scared little assholes just like you. And that made... <laughs> and that made you feel powerful. So you got together with your new friends, grabbed some $10 tiki torches and took to the street to preserve what you have. But all you really have is being lucky enough to be born a white guy. You have never been persecuted or discriminated against, but now... Your picture is everywhere, and everyone thinks you're a Nazi. So yes, maybe this is the first time you will feel persecuted. I want to make it very, very clear that I condemn white supremacists, alt-right assholes, and everything they stand for. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Are you, are you seriously applauding me for that? What I did wasn't particularly brave or hard. It's easy for me to say that I hate Nazis. <laughs> but President Trump needed to take a long time to think about where he stood on the whole Nazis marching in his name thing. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry and violence on many sides. On many sides. Many sides? No, no, there's only one side. The Nazi side. They're the bad guys. It's been proven in many films. <laughs> it's, it's not coming from many sides. This isn't a weird hexagon of racism. But Trump did say he condemns all violence. I, I, maybe we don't need to put labels on everything. To solve a problem, you have to be able to state what the problem is or at least say the name. But the name is there. It's radical Islamic terror. And before you solve it, you have to say the name. <laughs> yeah, Trump didn't say the name white supremacy until yesterday morning, two days after the rally. Mainly because Trump knows if he says white supremacy three times in a row, Steve Bannon appears in a window <laughs> holding a bloody baby. <laughs> Why is it so hard to condemn Nazis? Trump loves condemning <laughs> Tweets expressing disapproval of how actress Kristen Stewart broke up with actor Robert Pattinson. Rant after rant against Rosie O'Donnell. From suggesting John McCain and other POWs aren't heroes because they got captured. To mocking a disabled reporter. From attacking a former Miss Universe. To a Gold Star family. From the cast of Hamilton. To his own attorney general. There is seemingly no one who is immune to the president's ire. Except Nazis. <laughs> Unless that Nazi couldn't lose the baby weight, then watch out, Trump's coming to get you. <laughs> but the truth is, in the last nine years, right-wing militias have been responsible for twice as many terrorist attacks as Islamic extremists. So, well, white people are actually better at terrorism. <laughs> but it's not a competition. I, uh... <laughs> but just identifying the problem doesn't make it go away. We have to recognise that racism has deep roots in this country. And maybe celebrating those roots isn't the best idea. But, but some Americans say the fight is to uh, save their heritage. OK, fine. It's your heritage. But you don't have to be proud of 
all your heritage. You're allowed to look at some of your heritage and go, oh, that's bad heritage. Maybe I should learn from that heritage and not do that heritage again. <laughs> the people who complain about removing Confederate statues say it's tearing down history and the monuments remind us about the mistakes of the past. Don't worry. Your history will still be there. If my son asked me about Robert E. Lee, I don't say, ah, oh, I, I could have told you last week, but they took the statue down. <laughs> now, now I have no way of getting that information. <laughs> there are no statues of Hitler in Germany, and yet somehow <laughs> we still remember him. <laughs> now, of course, in the wake of these horrible events, celebrities took to Twitter to express their outrage. With Lady Gaga using the hashtag, this is not us. Powerful words. But unfortunately, this is us. It's a part of this country and we can't pretend it's not. If a doctor finds a cancer in my left testicle, I don't say, I don't have cancer, my left testicle has cancer. <laughs> That's not me. But it is me. I may not like that part of me, but it's me. I don't blame my right testicle and claim there's testicle problems on both sides. No, instead, we cut that cancer out as quickly and as aggressively as possible and hope it doesn't come back.